June 17 is observed every year as the World Day to Combat Desertification and Drought. And in 2025, the United Nations has chosen the theme, Restore the Land, Unlock the Opportunities. But what does it mean to restore land? It means we've already lost vast stretches of it to desertification, drought and to degradation. So in this video, let's understand the scale of the problem. What is desertification and drought? Why is it happening? How is it affecting countries like India? And most importantly, what can we do to reverse it? Let's begin with the basics. Drought is a prolonged period of unusually low rainfall. The Indian Meteorological Department or the IMD defines drought as a situation where rainfall deficiency in an area is greater than or equal to 26% of its long-term normal. This deficiency is further categorized into moderate drought, which is 26-50% to 50 and severe drought, which is more than 50%. It leads to water shortages, affects agriculture and disrupts daily life, especially in regions dependent on monsoon patterns. Desertification, on the other hand, is a form of land degradation. It happens when dry lands lose moisture, nutrients and biological productivity, eventually turning fertile land into barren areas. Globally, drought affects around 1.84 billion people, or one in every eight, and the frequency of droughts has increased by 29% since 2000. The IPCC warns that every region of the world is likely to see more heat waves and water shortages in the coming decades. By 2040, one in four children may be living in areas facing extreme water stress. In India, nearly 30% of the land is already undergoing degradation. Droughts impact agriculture, hydropower, food production and rural incomes, especially in semi-arid regions like Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Telangana and parts of the Deccan Plateau. The impacts are both environmental and economic. As land degrades, agriculture becomes less productive. Food insecurity rises, rural incomes fall and people start migrating, either seasonally or permanently, in search of better conditions. This has domino effect, not just on livelihoods, but also on biodiversity, water systems, climate resilience and even regional stability. So what can be done? One of the most effective responses is investing in nature-based solutions. These are the actions that protect, restore and manage ecosystems in a way that also addresses human challenges. Examples include planting native trees to hold soil and improve water retention, restoring wetlands to reduce flood risk and recharge groundwater, agroforestry where trees and crops are grown together, contour bunding and check dams to prevent soil erosion. These are low-cost, scalable solutions that also create jobs and support rural livelihoods. Across the Sahel region in Africa, one of the boldest nature-based solutions is underway, the Great Green Wall. It's an ambitious project to restore 100 million hectares of degraded land by planting a mosaic of greenery across 8,000 kilometers from Senegal in the west to Djibouti in the east. And one of the most effective techniques they're using looks deceptively simple. It's called zypids or half-moon bunts. Crescent moon-shaped pits dug along the contours of sloping land help trap rainwater, reduce runoff and prevent soil erosion. Over time, they allow moisture to soak into the ground, turning dry, cracked earth into fertile planting beds. Farmers often fill them with compost and seeds, giving degraded land a second life. In a project similar to Africa's Great Green Wall, Haryana is restoring nearly 25,000 hectares of degraded Aravalli land across five districts. Through soil and water conservation, planting local species and involving communities, this initiative is halting desert spread and boosting urban ecology. In Rajasthan, the Dabla Talab Restoration Project was led by Professor Sham Sundar Diani in 2022. The community-driven approach transformed 207 acres of barren land into a thriving ecosystem, proving how local initiative can bring degraded land back to life. And in Tamil Nadu, the revival of the Kudimara Matu scheme, a traditional community-led water restoration system, has brought lakes, ponds and kennels back into working condition, strengthening both water security and biodiversity. 
Together, these efforts show that the land can be restored when nature and people work together. The world needs to restore 1.5 billion hectares of land by 2030 to reverse degradation and meet climate goals. This also aligns with the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, which is from 2021 to 2030, which is now at its halfway point. If we act now, we can build a trillion dollar land restoration economy, one that creates jobs, protects nature, and ensures water and food security for future generations. The theme of 2025, Restore the Land and Lock the Opportunities, reminds us that healthy land is the foundation of a healthy society. Desertification and drought may not make daily headlines, but they are among the most urgent environmental challenges of our time.